can. Um, there are several functions uh, relating to taxonomy in terms. So um, there's the management function. I can register a new taxonomy. Um, there are conditionals or checkers. So I can check if I'm displaying an archive page for some taxonomy or even some term. I can check if an object belongs to a taxonomy or either um, a term, if some um, object has a term or so. And of course, there are setters and getters to yeah, set um, and assign terms to objects or uh, check, uh, yeah, get some terms or whatever. Um, then there is the tax query. So um, if I want to have a bunch of posts and post um, yeah, some constraints about terms or taxonomies on that post, I can say, um, yeah, let's fetch all posts of the standard post type, post, and um, I only want them if they either have the category WordCamp Berlin or the tag WCBER. Um, whatever I put into that text query, it's internally converted to an object and then, uh, yeah, fetched to the parser and is then uh, processed. Um, as with almost any function, there are actions and filter hooks for plugin or theme authors to um, use and hook into. And this is nothing uh, special here. Um, but yeah, for almost any function, there is at least um, one action or if the function is um, working with inputs or gives output or so, I have mon one or two or maybe uh, more filters. Um, Taxonomies and terms are for posts, 34. That's what the codex says. I can manage structure group posts. But um, in fact, I can also use taxonomies <coughs> and terms for comments. Um, there are some things to be uh, considered. So first of all, if I want to use a taxonomy for comments, um, that must be a new separate taxonomy. Why is that? It's because um, comments are stored in a separate database table. So there might be a comment with ID one and there might be a post or page with ID one. If I have one taxonomy sharing, or if I have comments and posts share one taxonomy, in the database there will be um, some entry. Um, the term with ID 42 belongs to ID one and yeah, we have comments and post uh, tables. There is an entry with ID one. So that means if I set some term to the comment with ID one, the database table entry will be ID of the term and ID one, which is the ID of my comment. But there's also a post with that ID. And if I fetch a post and, I, and ask what um, terms does it have, yeah, it has this term, which I just wanted <coughs> to add to a comment. Um, yeah, what are the use cases of common taxonomies? Um, suppose you have some um, support forum or so, it's just a fictional example, and um, yeah, the user writes comments, and um, the user or some <coughs> moderator can choose what is the type of the comment, or um, how urgent is that request or so, just an example. Um, yeah, as with comments, we can also use taxonomies and their terms for users. Um, and as before, we have to use an, um, a new separate taxonomy just because users are stored in a third separate table. So yeah, ID1, there's a comment with ID1, uh, there's a post and there's a user with ID1. <coughs> and I guess I don't want to mix that. Um, in my opinion, user taxonomies or user terms are um, more useful, more powerful than common taxonomies. Um, what you could do with that is um, have some community web page or um, some um, company web page or so and um, have some individual, um, yeah, let's say things of aspects added attached to that user. So you can say um, in what departments does that user work? Uh, what's their interest or what's their skill. 
Um, I did write out a plugin for that. Um, in fact, there is already a plugin. I think it's three or four years old. Um, I took that one and a half year ago and rewrote that. Um, what you could do with that is register a user taxonomy just like you do for post. So we register a new taxonomy for the object type user. Then we add some um, arguments. The capabilities um, like this is um, the user itself can assign because um, the capability read almost anyone has. You could also, also use exist here or so. But managing the taxonomy is up to someone who has the capability edit users. So the users can take a, I have this skill, I have that skill, that's my interest, but they don't um, have the right to add new stuff or, or delete terms or so. Um, then that plugin has some special options, so you can choose a cardinality. So um, the user can choose what their interests are, but only up to a limit of three, um, for instance. Um, or you can say if the user has to uh, uh, assign some term, or if there are taxonomies where the user doesn't have to use um, some term. You can use tags, that is, um, the user can add new terms. If text is false or you just have text is true, then the user can just choose from the terms someone else added before. Yeah, and you can have priorities. Um, terms in general are just stored in the database. So there's a relation, object ID and term ID or term taxonomy ID. And you have no, um, yeah, you, you're not able to say, um, the user has that skill set, so maybe these three skills, but that's more important or that's his best skill than that, than that. That's not possible. Um, yeah, with that plugin, it is possible. I'm just storing in some user meta fields the um, order of my terms. So I can use maybe three terms from some user taxonomy and say this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. Um, the plugin is on GitHub. Unfortunately, it's not um, yet refactored. I started two weeks ago refactoring that. Um, yeah, and then uh, I had to make up the slides and um, I'm not yet finished. But um, the repository is there. If you're interested in that, you can watch it and yeah, you can, you'll be informed about some uh, things going on. Um, yeah, this is the backend page for a user taxonomy. It's almost like um, some a normal post taxonomy. Um, of course, um, there's no posts listed here. There are users listed here in the um, right column of the table. And um, each user taxonomy is added to the users menu. So in your WordPress backend, you have here the users menu, and then you have um, maybe if you're an administrator, you have all users, um, your profile, add new, something like that, and then user department skill or so, you can manage the taxonomies um, directly there. Um, this is some <coughs> backend view of one um, user profile. The department is um, some prioritized taxonomy where the user can just um, choose one um, term. If I had um, set there three terms, we had three select boxes, and the top is priority one, then priority two, priority three. Um, the second, the skills, is just a normal taxonomy. There are some taxonomy terms set, and the user can choose from. And the interests is a tag with a maximum of three. So the user can add new tags or interests, um, but there's a limit of three, and yeah, you can sets, is there an empty set allowed or does it have to be at least one or, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, another thing you could do with taxonomies or their terms is link two or more taxonomies to synchronize the terms. Um, yeah, what does that mean? Um, we have two or more taxonomies that in fact share the same terms. So um, either we have two taxonomies registers registered for two different post types. So I have a taxonomy for the default post, like category, 
and I have a post type event, and I have a new taxonomy event <coughs> category. Uh, why ever I would need that, just an example. Um, another example is you have a taxonomy for posts or posts, pages, and some other post types, and you want to have a user taxonomy. As we know, we have to use two taxonomies for users and posts, so we could um, add some user category. There's always categories. We can um, say the default category taxonomy is not just for posts, it's for posts, pages, and events, and so. But if we want to use user categories, we have to use a new taxonomy. But if all the terms in both taxonomies are the same, yeah, I don't want to add all twice and delete everything twice and so. So I can just link that to taxonomies. And whatever I do to one taxonomy's terms will be propagated to the other or maybe the other taxonomies if I have also common category or so. Um, yeah, that's what I already said. Just um, the changes will be propagated to the other categories or the other <coughs> taxonomies. Um, we have to somehow manage the linked taxonomies. So that is, which taxonomies are even linked to each other, and what is that? Um, yeah, what is the type of the relationship? Do we have some master taxonomy, and everything that I change there will be propagated to some slave taxonomies, or is there some bidirectional um, relationship? So either I change in the user category or the default post category. And yeah, the changes will be propagated um, in both directions. And how do we do that? Yeah, we just have to hook into four actions. Uh, basically, there are three actions. Mm. We have to use edit terms and edit a term taxonomy because um, yeah, both actions don't, uh, so um, the edit terms doesn't give me what I need. So I have to store um, some information before that that I can access that later. Um, also, for that, there is a <coughs> simple <coughs> plugin. It's just um, a new settings page, taxonomies, um, where you have a mapping of all your taxonomies that you can filter by default. Um, I guess I chose all taxonomies that um, are public or have an archive or something like that, um, but that can be filtered. And you can choose. Um, yeah, which taxonomy is linked to what other taxonomy and what is that for a link? Is it unidirectional, so it's master-slave, or is it um, um, bidirectional? So in this, uh, in this example, we have the categories and um, the tags are linked from both sides. That's uh, why in the tags section also there is bidirectional uh, set that is uh, done by JavaScript. Um, and we have some master-slave um, from tags to navigation menus. This is here. So everything I change in tags will be propagated to navigation menus. But what I do for some navigation menu term, yeah, it's, uh, it has no effects on my tags. Um, Wow, this is dark. Uh, this should be blue. Um, let's forget about terms and taxonomies for a while. Um, what is metadata? Uh, we asked the codex before. Let's ask the plugin handbook now. Um, metadata is information about information. Okay. Um, so we have data that belongs somehow to an object but it doesn't have to be there, or it's no part of the object. It is not required for that object to exist. Um, OK, that is abstract. Um, post metadata. We have post objects. Um, a post has some data fields in the table that have to be there. There doesn't have to be some value in that, but the post table says every post object has this information. This that information. Um, examples for post metadata is yeah the edit log of a post. Um, for a navigation menu, what object ID does it belong to? Um, for a page, what page template does this um, page 
post half or so. Um, for user metadata, it's, um, for instance, the admin color scheme. Um, the first name of a user, a user does, um, <coughs> must have a login. It must uh, be some um, yeah, display name there, but um, not every user will enter or yeah, uh, does have to enter the first name, the last name, um, and some other information. Um, and also there's some management, some settings um, stored into user data fields. So if the user exchanges, um, um, not exchanges, changes some um, meta box positions or so, that is stored into a user meta field. Um, of course, there are API um, functions for metadata, so I can, for a specific user ID and a meta key, I can fetch a value. Um, yeah, I can get user meta, post meta, I can update and delete um, some information. And as you can see, in every function, there is some object ID involved, either it's um, post ID or a user ID. Um, as with taxonomy or term queries, we can query objects, posts, and users um, by using some metadata information. So I can um, just fetch the posts that have the full width page template. Um, or I can fetch every Jane Doe's in my uh, yeah, company website or um, dating portal or whatever. Um, Let's have a look at the performance of meta queries. Um, all metadata tables, there are for posts, for users, and for comments, a separate metadata table because, yeah, as we know, posts, users, and comments have their own table. And that's why there also has to be a separate meta table for each uh, other table, just because, like before, have ID one here and there and over there and yeah it must be um, determined what object do I have so there's post meta user meta and comment meta um, all these tables or none of these this table is designed to be queried against meta value so you can do but you should not ask from ten thousand of my users um, I want to have all the users with the email, there's some reg expression in there. Um, WordPress is able to do that, but it's um, yeah slow. Um, why is that? The meta value field is not indexed. Um, there is, however, an index on the column where's the object ID. So if I'm fetching for some user or some post, that entity has an ID. Um, that is indexed. And the start of the meta key is indexed. Yeah, the start is um, 191 characters, which is uh, yeah enough, I think. Um, so if you query against the metadata table by object ID, that's great. That's uh, yeah how that's to be used. Object ID and meta key is also great, um, and the meta key that's also okay. You can, as I had as I said before, ask for some specific meta value, but that's slow. Suppose that maybe use terms for that. That depends on how I want to work with the metadata. Do I want to query posts or users by that value, or want do I want to display the value or something like that? Depending on that, you can use a new taxonomy storing metadata information. So we use internally the tax query instead of the meta query. Um, we can have complex conditions on that query by using a hierarchical taxonomy, for instance. So I have one term for the company email address, and below that I uh, edit or add and then assign to users some um, other terms holding the email address or whatever I want to do with that. And it's fast, because everything I'm using here is an index of the tables. There are three tables, up to three tables involved, yes, but I'm using only indexed fields, and most of that is also cached. As I said before, this is not possible with every metadata query, because if I want to um, display on a user profile page some extra information, I, also I already have the user ID, I have the meta 
the, that's what MetaData is uh, designed for. But not give me all users with whatever. This is, yeah, not so good. Um, this is how that could look, li look like. So I'm fetching all popular posts that are posts that have the term popular post. Um, this is the combination of both. So first I do a tax query. So I'm checking for all users. I'm checking for all users that have uh, that uh, WordPress.org account. If I have these users, I iterate through them and display some user metadata field. I'm just using index fields here. Um, yeah, a simple plugin that could get you started is just I have a new taxonomy that's um, yeah with hopefully appropriate arguments. So it's it doesn't have a um, public archive because I don't want that to be just I want the taxonomy for querying. Um, that can be customized and there is a new function yeah it's just um, a predefined set of you can just ask if a object or user or comments um, has some meta term so it's basically has term but you don't have to specify the taxonomy name here um, let's finish with some latest news on the term taxonomy section um, the latest news okay the latest upcoming news. Um, since or in WordPress 4.4 there will be the WP term class, so a WP term object that replaces the old, yeah, I wouldn't call it an object, it's just some data container. Um, there is a static getter for an instance of that term. Every public property that uh, um, that's these terms had before, yeah, they are just there, of course. Um, and <coughs> these are two examples. So um, I fetch the object for some term ID and then do something with the object or I create a new term. This, the, um, the last, so the second example does not mean there is a new term in the database. I only have created an object of the WP term class and can work with that. Um, the second thing is term meta. It's not to be confused with meta terms. Um, it's also coming with WordPress 4.4. It has been mm. a long way to achieve this um, because there first had to be some yeah, very um, hard to achieve things to be achieved. That's why it, it took, I guess, six, seven development cycles, major releases, I'm not sure. Um, what does it mean? Yeah, it's just uh, complete metadata for terms. So there's a new table. There are specific meta term, um, t term, what? Ah, okay, this is um, add term meta, insert term meta, and so. And there's a meta query for term. There's and yeah some use cases um, for an archive page of some category, I might want to have some image to be attached to a term that could be displayed on the front end. Or I can relate terms to each other or other creative stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah. Andre. So you said it like multiple times that the issue with the query by value is blocking indexes. Mm -hmm. And why not just block indexes? Um, yeah, I guess because metadata isn't supposed to be queried by value. It, it depends on what you well, want to do with a metadata. A lot of things in WordPress are supposed to be something yeah. <laughs> different from reality. Yeah. <laughs> So because uh, this is like this is not too common, but it's considered acceptable practice because WordPress will never remove indexes. It's yeah. kind of a promise of course development yeah. that the new indexes will be added. But if you add custom indexes, it won't uh, touch them. Yeah, of course you could do that, but yeah, that's just another um, addition to WordPress. You can use meta taxonomy, or you can um, yeah 
change the way your meta information is stored or you can access that. That's right, yeah. So I would say that depends on, are you using the meta value for querying objects or do you want to display the meta value or fields where you have some value? I think, um, yeah, as I said, I don't want, I didn't want to say metadata is bad and uh, querying or using meta value is bad, not at all, but depending on what you want to do, maybe using yeah, an SQL query where you have to maybe multiple times because you have mm. um, several meta key value pairs um, in your query. It gets really bad when yeah. it uses multiple times in one query because it starts to like start multiple journeys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm just feel that this is a bit trying to solve like a SQL issue with PHP. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For example, if you uh, have a uh, user taxonomy like uh, I like PHP, mm -hmm. and um, I have a tag for the post, the tag on PHP. Mm -hmm. So it's perfectly possible to have an, uh, a widget where, uh, as soon as I uh, uh, have uh, selected uh, the corresponding uh, uh, skill or interest mm -hmm. in my profile. That I have uh, a widget in a sidebar showing only PHP uh, tags for me as a personal user. Yeah, for instance. Yeah, so you could do that. The, the only drawback of that is uh, that it will fuck up uh, uh, caching. No, not exactly, because since WordPress 4.2 or 4.3, um, you have, if there is a term having some name or slug in that taxonomy, and you have the very same term in another taxonomy. These are two separate entries now. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, 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 I meant that it will fuck up uh, the full page HTML caching. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's with dynamic um, content yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you. Um, you could use some sort of linked taxonomy for that, but um, that depends on what your use case exactly is. So you have. Okay. And the terms are in one taxonomy. Okay. Yeah, this is um, not exactly what I displayed um, here because. Um, yeah, in my example, I would have one taxonomy for the English term, one for the Latin term, and just link them. Um, but, um, yeah, that's not exactly that. But, um, yeah, um, so I wouldn't think. What are the views then? So you have like two, uh, two terms that mean the same thing. Do you have two separate archives? Yeah, that's if true. You have you, if you search Latin or German, you just say you need both, uh, both words. Okay. You, could same you could use like English version as canonical and uh, add uh, like uh, another language as metadata to it. Uh, exactly, as so you have since term and 4 .4. Each translation as metadata. And then on output, you then present both. This is uh, with WordPress 4.4 4 .4 possible. So you can add a new field for the term. Uh, I don't know, the core does, as far as I know, um, the next major does not have um, UI for that already, or does it? Sorry, so, so it yeah, with yeah, term meta, uh, exactly. Yeah, so you can decide um, the term name and slug, should it be the Latin name or the English name or so? and the other language or other languages you could add so as meta fields if that's all for one site and one language. Yeah. Yeah, Tosha. Yeah. Uh, you said you can uh, assign taxonomy to almost, almost any object. Yeah, there, there are just three types of objects. Yeah, there's one type of object that you can use 
I think uh, protectionism that uh, aside in the natural. Mm -hmm. There is uh, in the um, database schema a file. It's a uh, function to create site category. Mm -hmm. That's never used in core. Would you suggest to use that, or is this a bad solution? Or how, how would how would you try to? Um, I, I don't know that um, function set, that API, but um, on the first thought, um, you could, if you have multi sites, um, just use some taxonomy in a plugin or MU plugin activated network wide and um, yeah, use the site or the block ID depending on where you look um, and yeah, and attach there. That uh, but, but that depends on where you want to display that in the backend. Where do you want to use the term display some? Uh in, in the sites table. Okay. In the backend, in the sites table, and in the frontend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. F I d I, as I said, I don't know the um, site category functionality, but um, if it's fully <coughs> implemented and just not used, yeah, why not using it? And if not, you could achieve that. I, as I as I'm thinking now with just a new taxonomy, which, yeah, yeah ha I mean has the to be... The question is, is it uh, better to uh, create a new table, like the core function in WordPress does, that isn't used anywhere? It is okay. It's like a copy of the uh, site taxonomy table, but in for the net, just for the network. Okay, uh, um, I, or I or can't do think... Or use a, a, a taxonomy in the main site and yeah. use it to block? I'm not sure what, what is better. Um, you, you don't have to use switch to block because um, you can access, y yeah, okay, um, yeah. Let's say you have the main sites holding the terms of that. Yeah, okay, then you have to switch um, to the block, but just once, fetch all the information and then iterate through your sites, get the ID and use the term. Yeah, you could do that. But it's interesting that there is some unfinished or not yet used or, uh, yeah, yeah, functionality. I think that was um, added for plugin compatibility because there are <coughs> some plugins who are trying to do that. And As with term uh, order. To, to set a, a standard database schema. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if that's really the solution. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you have recommendations about when it is better to use the taxonomy or both the user letter? For example, with the user yeah. who has a skill. Do you want to query the meta value to get the meta value, or do you want to use the meta value to query something? That's what I say is the, is the distinction. If you want to have the, uh, the object, then use a term because you're not interested in the value. If you want to display for some object, user, post, or so, um, the Jabber account or whatever, then it's metadata because you have that object, you know the key, and this is indexed. So you can just look it up and display, this is the Jabber account of that user. But if you want to query all users having a Jabber account, you could use both, because you don't um, ask for a specific value, you just ask uh, for any user having some matter with the key Jabber account or what it's called. But you could also use a term. That depends on what you want to do. And maybe you could use a term and metadata, and yeah, depending on the context, when you ask what, use both. Of course, you have, uh, I don't know what's English for doppelte Buchführung irgendwie. Um, but yeah, that depends on what you want to do. Okay, I guess time's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>